Hi, I'm Sam. Welcome to my channel. I'm an artist and I help other artists to grow in skills and confidence in my online membership. And I also teach them how to make some serious money doing what they love every day. In this video, I'm going to be talking about paper and getting started in coloured pencil. This is a requested video that I've done before, but I think it's time to update it. So let's get into the video. So the first paper I want to talk about in relation to colour pencils is smooth paper. Now there are lots of different alternatives out there, so I can only really talk about the ones that I've used and really love and would recommend to use. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the one that I recommend to everybody, especially in my membership, and it's the De La Rani Smooth Heavyweight. It's £135, or not price, that's weight, or 220 grams per metre squared. So it's a pretty good thickness of paper. I think I've actually got drawings on the paper, the cat's eye. Pretty good thickness of paper. And I think it's a really good all-rounder. It actually takes, you can see, all of the different mediums that you want to use on it. It actually can take water. It does buckle, but then I don't really know any watercolour paper that hasn't buckled. And you can certainly flatten it easily. But I think this one's a really good all-rounder. It's got enough tooth that you can add lots of layers. So great for coloured pencils. It's a good quality. The only thing I would say is that if you're a little bit heavy handed and you're onto your kind of final layers, however that many that may be, it could be 10, 15, 20 layers. I have actually, if the pencil's too sharp, slightly damaged the surface of the paper, especially in a really dark area like the pupil of the eye. So it's just something that you need to be mindful of, that you need to be a little bit more lighter with your pressure but then i think that applies to color pencil anyway so it's a really good <laughs> learning tool if you know that you might damage the paper if you press too hard then that's a reason not to do it so the next one i would recommend in the smooth section is the bristol the strathmore this is called bristol board you might see it online i really like the vellum it comes with so many different ones you've got airbrushed you've got smooth you've got vellum Vellum's really good for coloured pencils because it has a bit more of a tooth. So this is a 300 series. What's the weight? This is £100, so it's actually not as heavy as the De La Rani Smooth Heavyweight. 270 grams per metre squared. This comes in different sizes, so 11 by 17. So it's a bit more kind of long and narrow, but again, really good thickness, really good quality, lovely tooth, so lots of layers can be applied. And... What I would say is that it's a little bit softer than the De La Rani Smooth. You get a little bit of a different look to it, but it, I think it's a really, really great paper. So I would definitely recommend that. Moving on from the smooth papers leads me nicely into watercolour papers, which work brilliantly with coloured pencil. Now, I've used a few. This one I think is really good, the De La Rani Aquafine Smooth. It's a uh, hot pressed. Now, this is really important. There's two types of watercolour paper. There's hot pressed and cold pressed. Hot pressed is a lot smoother. Cold pressed is that kind of really bumpy paper that you get, which is fantastic for watery mediums. It enables it to spread out evenly. So you get beautiful, lovely washes of watercolour, say. Hot pressed can be HP as well. And cold pressed can sometimes be not. So have a look for that. So have a little look at the texture if you get your hands on this. It's really good thickness, 140 pounds so obviously designed for watercolor paper it's a bit thicker and it will take quite a lot of layers it's not as textured obviously as the cold pressed which will give you you won't be able to get the detail in that you want probably with colored pencils with the hot pressed you can get both you can get the lovely blending and you can also get the detail which i think is fantastic so this one i would recommend i always try to recommend something that's a little bit more reasonably priced these two are definitely reasonably priced because paper can be really expensive and if you're just experimenting or just starting out you certainly don't want to be spending a fortune on paper if you're going to just try and experiment and you're not going to be happy with the result because we aren't happy immediately aren't we it's something that takes time so it might be that you want something to practice on first rather than spending a lot of money but as you move on and you become a little bit more confident then you might want to try something like Fabriano you might have heard other artists talk about this it's got a bit of a long name Fabriano Artistico hot pressed watercolor paper you can get lots of different weights this is the 140 pounds but you can get a 300 pound as well which obviously is a lot thicker a lot more expensive 
Um, I really like the extra white because with coloured pencils, as you probably know, the light colours don't show up that well over the top of dark. So if you're leaving your highlights free of colour, which is the way you usually work with coloured pencils, similar to watercolour, with something like acrylics or oils, you work from dark to light. With coloured pencils, you work from light to dark. So you have the lovely option of having really bright sun shining and my blinds are rubbish, but hopefully you can see. I can't really tell on camera. You can in real life. There's definitely like a yellowier tone to this De La Rainey, and this is a lot lighter. This is great because you can use a mixed media on it. You can see with this one I've done in the background, I've used watercolour background and then a little bit of coloured pencil on top. So it's actually glued all the way around, which helps to stop the warping, although it does warp a little bit. Maybe I just use too much water, but you know, I like to splosh around. It's 100% cotton, it's vegan friendly, so you know that the adhesive that they use is nothing sinister, and it's just a really good quality paper, but it's pretty pricey. I think this pad for 20 sheets was about £40. So it's quite a lot of money, especially if you're not necessarily selling your work or it's a commission where you know you're getting paid. It's a whole different ball game when you know that you're getting money for it and you're going to return. If it's a hobby and you're just buying art supplies, then it might be that you want to wait with the Artistico and just see how you get on. So that's why I re recommend the Dale Rowney. You can get this in big sheets as well. And I found the front and the back are very different, especially in the sheets. I think it really does make a difference if you buy it in a pad or if you buy it as an open sheet. The texture seems slightly different. So that's something to watch. But I've used this one now for the past couple of drawings, coloured pencil and watercolour. And it's a really, really lovely paper. So I think it's worth the price, definitely. OK, so moving on to a slightly different texture which is pastel matte. I've only got my little pad left. I think I've got some sheets that are kind of loose. Pastel matte is brilliant because it comes in lots of different colours. So you can either use the background colour as a mid-tone. So if you've got a brown animal, you could use like a yellowy tone just to enable you to just go lighter and darker. It's really amazing. You've got to try it. Pastel matte also you can do light over dark, which is completely against what happens with the smooth papers. So you can layer lighter pencils over the top of dark. So if you want some more highlights, it shows up, which is amazing. It's such a brilliant thing. Pastel matte is a slightly different surface. So it's not like people call people say it's a bit like sandpaper. It's not. It's it's more kind of it's like flocking in a way. Do you, do you remember that wallpaper? I mean, I think you can still get it. It's it's a definitely a, a texture and it's not smooth but it's it's nowhere near like sandpaper it does eat your pencils and anyone that says it doesn't i just think it's probably a case of light hand again little pressure but it eats your pencils more than a smooth surface would of course it does because there's a slight friction and there's there's a surface it would be like rubbing your pencil against glass and rubbing your pencil against concrete. I don't know why you'd ever do that, but that's to, to me, of course, it's going to eat your pencils a little bit more than smooth paper. But again, if that's a reason to lighten your pressure and think about the layering, then I, I just think that's a good thing when it comes to coloured pencils, because I'm really guilty of pressing too hard. And when I do, I always regret it. It always looks better when I'm much lighter hand. Pastel mat, I have never run out of layers ever. So that's something you don't have to worry about. There is a little bit of a different technique with this, as in lighter hand, lots and lots of layers. You might find that the graininess stays there for quite a lot longer, in which case you just have to be patient and keep going with light layers over and over the top. And I found recently that polychromos, I think work brilliantly on pastel mat, and the white polychromos, which has always been a little bit useless, is brilliant on pastel mat for blending. So. Definitely recommend that. It comes in lots of different colours. It comes in these pads or it comes on board, which again is a slightly different texture. The only downside that I found with pastel mat is the consistency of the surface. So sometimes you will find, especially I've noticed in the pads, that you will have an area of the paper 
that you can't apply any pencil to. And it might be tiny or it might be big. It might be off to the side of your subject or it might be right in a crucial place. So that's the one downside I found with pastel mat. It, it just is a little bit inconsistent when it comes to the texture, but that's very few and far between. It's happened probably twice in the odd kind of 20 to 30 drawings. So, you know, that's the kind of statistics that you're going to get you might get the odd one in 20 to 30 drawings so pastel matte definitely recommend lots of beautiful colors grays blacks lovely and it really does show the subject up really well i'll put a little clip of my owl in the next surface i wanted to talk about was something called drafting film now this is amazing i've got polydraw um i've also used graphics the, the duralar i haven't got any at the moment so i couldn't show you but I think this is a really good one to start with because, again, it can be quite expensive. The, the Duralar is more expensive than the Polydraw, and this is perfectly good to, to try it out. Now, the great thing about drafting film, the actual drafting film is semi-translucent. So you can see through it. You can see, you can see my, my thumb through it. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see through it. So what happens is when you draw on drafting film, it almost gives it a 3D look without you even trying. It gives it a, like when you draw an acetate and it just, when you hold it up, it gives it that 3D look. So if you struggle with your drawings looking flat, then drafting film might be a really good option for you because it does lift it off the paper in a way that smooth papers, you have to work a lot harder to do. The, uh, the only thing that I would say about drafting film is that you can't layer as much but in some ways that's a really good thing because you don't need as many layers as you do with smooth paper. I think it's quicker. You can use the slice tool or the craft knife on it beautifully to scrape off for highlights or flyaways. So there's lots of advantages to drafting film. And I think if you try it and you've been working on smooth paper, you will be amazed at how impactful the piece is. It just seems to pop off the paper with very little effort which is fantastic so a really good way to really get that 3d look you can also put different colors behind it to enhance certain colors the erasers don't work as well on it that's one thing i would say but you don't need them because you can use the slice tool really give that a go it's brilliant it's fantastic and it's something that people don't often think about or use the next type of paper i wanted to talk about was toned paper just to make it a little bit more interesting let me see if I can show you pictures of horses. Alarm, I see oh, that light really annoying in the middle, but there's nothing I can do about it. I've tried. So these drawings, you can see that the highlights really stand out. You can use white pencil and it's just lovely. So you've got the mid-tones there. Don't disregard different coloured papers. I've got black as well, the De La Rowney and the Canford black. No paper I found is like really, really black. This one's pretty close. But it does mark if you know if you rub out it goes shiny basically with any erasing you're gonna you're gonna notice it but don't disregard tampa you can get lovely browns again a little bit similar to the pastel mat you can use it as a mid-tone if you're if you're drawing a, a brown animal but yeah so that's the next paper i would recommend this is the strathmore and this is the de la Rowney. this is 80 pounds so it's not not in price again in weight um so it's quite thin but you can get quite a few layers in and this is 90 pounds, so it's a little bit thicker, but not, um, not as thick as the other papers. And the last one I wanted to talk about, which is a little bit of a wild card, but it's patterned paper. So I've used this for drawing, I think I drew a bird on it. Let's see if I can find it. Just be a bit mindful that some of the papers have like a bit of a shiny, like this one with dots on it. It's actually shiny, you can see in the light there. So the, the pencil's not gonna show up on top of that. You can draw on books, you can draw on music. I think a patterned background looks really good. It looks really different. So don't disregard anything that you can draw on. You can draw on canvas as well, as long as it's quite smooth. So don't disregard that either. There are so many different options. So I've given you um, ones that are more reasonably priced and ones that are a little bit more expensive. So I really hope that helps you to work out what kind of things you can work on. Of course, there are so many different makes and brands and all that kind of thing. I can only really go on the things that I've used and would personally recommend. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful so you know where to begin in your coloured pencil journey and also what options are available for you in the future. It's never ending, which keeps it so exciting. 
If you would like to see more videos like this, then please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you're notified of future videos. I upload art tip videos every Tuesday and art business videos every Friday. And I really look forward to seeing you very soon. Bye for now.